So here you are. You know what you don't want. You know what you do want. You've launched the rocket. Now you've got choices. So let's say you care about feeling good, and so you focus on it in a way that you do, so you close that gap, and you accomplish whatever it was that that desire was. You also accomplish a whole new set of contrasting experiences, so it starts over again, and then again, and then again, and then again, and then again. So when you integrate into that treadmill the pleasure of the discovery of the new desire and the pleasure of the accomplishing of your alignment and the pleasure of the awareness that you have accomplished it and then the pleasure of the manifestation that is evidence that you have. So wouldn't a never-ending pleasurable treadmill be a pretty good way to live eternity? It means everything that the contrast caused you to want. It means more food for starving children. It means more love for those who feel unloved. But you've got to enjoy the journey or you can't tap into the awesome power that can then inspire or influence that. We're telling you that the pleasure is the means to your end. We're not quibbling with your ends. You can be as altruistic. You can be as life-saving. You can be of as much value to this world. You just can't do it unless you're tuned in, tapped in, turned on. That's all. There isn't anything that anyone wants that is for any other reason that they will feel good in the having of it. People, as a general rule, believe that they are here to prove some sort of worthiness. And it's a little upending when we say to them, there's no one requesting your worthiness. And it's like, well, then who am I performing for? <laughs> well, for your own satisfaction. Yikes, that isn't enough. I liked it better when it was God and all of my eternity depended on it. <laughs> It felt more like doing something about it when it was a bigger quest. But really, just for my pleasure, that doesn't seem enough. And yet, as eternal beings, you got to make that enough. Let's take it a little further. Let's acknowledge that you get this, you understand it, you do, we can feel it from you. And that you are more and more consistently tuning in. And you have found an easier path to tuning in once you started caring about how you feel, because that made you aware of your guidance. So you figured out earlier which movie you were watching and what influence you were under. So you got control of the momentum of your life. You're not countering your positive momentum with negative momentum. You're mostly on a positive momentum track, which means big things are happening in your world. Now, when a convergence happens. It's not just that this idea came together for you. It's several ideas are culminating all at the same moment. And your sense of being blessed, number one, and your sense of your personal awesomeness, number two, and your sense of the universal cooperation, number three, and your sense of all is well in the universe, number four. In other words, there's an energy and a synergy and an exponential thing that happens that is indescribable. But when you're living it, you know it. And that's when Esther says, oh, I love my life. I love my life. I love my life. I love my life. I love this moment. You just cannot sometimes even comprehend the bigness of what you've accomplished because you've stayed longer in non-resistant thought. Until you're really there, it's sort of like a treadmill. But when you're there, it's not like a treadmill. It's like a rocket ship. It's the difference between a firecracker and an atomic bomb. And you will feel the awesomeness of that. You will feel your influence in the world. You will feel your influence for good in the world. You will realize that there isn't anything that you can focus on worldwide that you can't improve just by your gaze. You can feel yourself making a difference, not getting into the weeds and quibbling with those who don't understand anything about true power, but practicing your true power until your power of influence is in that place of awesomeness where you are using the energy that creates worlds to flow through you and direct the things that you care about, building empires and changing lives and uplifting nations and helping the world be a better place. This is not mediocrity. This is awesomeness that you're about. You see. It's just that sometimes you feel a little upended when you realize the goal that you thought was the goal isn't the most beneficial goal. 
you have been altruistic from the moment you hit the ground here. You have cared about being an uplifter right from the get-go. You have had those big thoughts and those big intentions. For most people, their inner being is external because they're not in sync with it. So it's something out there somewhere else. <laughs> and the people around them are so much more available. So love me, love me, love me, people. And I'll stand on my head so that you will. But oh, when you start letting it be, this cooperative thing that you've got going. Mm. Today, we've been out here on the leading edge. Today, we've been talking about the laws of the universe and what it feels like when you're in alignment. We've been connecting with resources. A whole lot of people running their vacuum cleaner all over the place, but they didn't plug it in, and so they're leaving tracks, but that's about all. But when you plug that thing in, when you plug that sucker in, <laughs> we want to say that being as you are is an advantage to every person who meets you. More people relate to the resistance in your vibration than they do to the non-resistance. Not really, not utterly, not solely from their soul, but more people have got that vibration going on, so more people get you when you're complaining than when you're not. That's what we mean when we say there's never a crowd on the leading edge. That's why the movies aren't oriented all of them to uplifting. It's turning a little bit. But the movies aren't oriented there either. And the news certainly isn't. The news wants to appeal to your darkest fears and to keep those fears active so you'll keep coming back. And so when you think about it, when you have lived all of that and you know all of that and you've assessed all of that and it's sitting where it's sitting and then you just begin applying this powerful new thought that we're presenting here today that says... I'm looking for the pleasure of a non-resisted thought. When you look for a pleasure of a non-resisted thought, you are reaching for a different audience. In the beginning, it might be just the audience of you and your inner being. But what it turns out to be is that part of every person who wants to feel better. If there is something that you're worried about that's active within you, then you'll keep rendezvousing there. But what's happened to Esther just really recently as we've been refining this and describing it to her, she will be just sort of in a place where she's just pondering. And she'll say, oh, not that movie, because there's someone in her vicinity or even somebody thinking about her, and she's tapping into it because there is vibrational reminiscence within it. It can wake that up within you, and the movie can start to play because that influence is, to some degree, underway. And as you feel the influence of the movie that starts to play, you say, oh, wait a minute, there's a different movie I'd like. And sometimes you can play a different movie intentionally about that person. Sometimes you have to change the subject altogether. It's attraction, 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 attraction. So no matter what you're getting, it's matching something that's active in you. You just can't get around that. There are two ways to know what your point of attraction is. What we recommend is what I'm feeling, catching it early. But if you don't, it'll manifest and then you'll see it. And in either case, it's beneficial. When you start making the correlation between the movie you've been watching as you've been under the influence of something unwanted and then what manifests further, when you start making the correlation between what you've been thinking and how you've been feeling and then what comes, then life isn't a mystery anymore. Then you're in the driver's seat. But don't make a big thing about it. Relax in this and don't make it hard. Just make it be something that's interesting and fun and getting better all the time. You know why it's the most important part? Because it's the longest part. The journey is always the longest part. The journey is always the longest part. Think about any journey. Wasn't it longer than the destination? How long did it take you to cook Thanksgiving dinner and how long did it take you to eat it? <laughs> the journey is always the longest part. So most people are doing a bit of looking forward to something but not all that happy now. But when they get over there to where they think they'll feel happier, then they often do feel happier. But meanwhile, they stood about it and they worried about it and they suffered over it and they deprived themselves of the true bigness of it. But when you start enjoying the journey, Esther started saying things 
because she's on the road a lot and she's on a lot of airplanes and she's in a lot of hotels and she's away from her family a lot and she started saying things years ago doesn't matter where I am as long as I'm having a good time wherever I am and it doesn't matter what I'm eating as long as it tastes good imagine being at a wonderful restaurant eating beautiful food and lamenting the fact that you're not over there at that other beautiful restaurant you don't usually do that you usually savor what you're eating don't you we want you to recognize that as we've been chewing together here today, that everything that's on your mind and therefore in your vortex has been known by your inner being and therefore by us, and we have talked about it all day long. There's nothing serious going on here. And we don't just mean here in this forum, we mean here in your life experience. Nothing serious in the sense that You've got dragons to slay and things to fix and imbalances to correct and wrongs to right. That's not what you came for. You came knowing that there'd be some of that, but you didn't come with a sense of responsibility that your satisfaction would come from fixing those things. Because you're really wise. You understood the laws of the universe as you were making your decision to be out here on this leading edge. You knew that the contrast would serve you because it would help you to define what you want. But you knew that once that definition happened within you, that your singular work would be to find the pleasure in that movie, you see. So if we'd met you on your first day, we would have nothing to say. You wouldn't have been asking anything. You'd have just been all frisky and saying, where's the contrast? Where's the contrast? Where's the contrast? And your inner being would say, oh, looking for the contrast, are you? Why are you looking for the contrast? And you'd say, building my vortex. I'm putting the distinct, unique things that matter to me forward. And your inner being teacher that it is might say, why would you want to do that? And you would say, because I know for sure from all that I've lived that unless I'm moving in the direction of something that I personally want, that there's no satisfaction. And after all, I came for the satisfaction of living life on planet Earth, of being the creator of my own reality, of assisting others in understanding the well-being that abounds. I came to do my part, my important part in the expansion of this universe. And your inner being still in teaching mode might say, oh, and is the expansion of the universe your responsibility? And you, in your very new infant wisdom, would say, oh no, it's not a responsibility, it's just fun. The expansion of the universe is inevitable. That can't be stopped. I don't have to do my work to cause the universe to expand. Our collective variance is what causes the expansion of the universe. And then your wise inner being might say to you, and so, you keep talking about the contrast or the variety or the variance. Are you here in order to tip that variance one way or another? And in your frisky infant wisdom, you would say, oh no, it's all appropriate. I'm not coming to stop anything. I'm just coming to find unique combinations of what's already here that please me more. That's how you felt when you came. And it's how we want you to return to feeling. We want you to know that you may be or do or have whatever you choose. And as you choose it, that the reason that you are choosing it is because you know the love and joy and pleasure and passion of non-resisted thought. You have known your power and you will never be happy in any moment that you are not allowing it to flow through you, you see. And your power is not at all about what anybody else is doing. It's yours. It's yours for the taking. We have enjoyed this interaction more than any that has ever been. We are happily anticipating what that means to you in terms of what unfolds next, not because you needed this, for the unfolding of what's coming, but because of the pleasure of your awareness as it unfolds, you're going to connect the dots.